What were and you that doing was a full big time? compliment. What was the full time? I job? was in real estate. I was pursuing, uh, you know, also politics. I, from the time I was a little kid, I wanted to be governor of Oregon. And I will be the governor of Oregon, but uh, really, you know, I was kind of uh, pursuing. That would be such a oh. great story. So why though? Why why uh, why that aspiration? By the way, I, I saw that you went to BYU for a minute, and then I'm like, is he LDS? And I'm like, no, he's not LDS. You're Catholic, yes. but you did go to BYU. Yes. But what was it? Did you, you did you and your father like uh, that? Your father admire like a Reagan or a Carson or somebody like out kind of like the way some of these guys are. Is that the era or no? You just want to go wanted to go into politics. I just always wanted to go into it. I, I remember uh, being a little kid and on the first day of school, for like first grade, second grade, third grade. But but on the first day, the teacher would always have us do the same thing, which is uh, write down on the paper what we want to be when we grow up. And I would write president of the United States. And when I got to high school, I changed that in, it, to governor. I brought it down to governor because <laughs> I didn't want to leave Oregon. Once I started traveling the nation, I, I was kind of a homebody. Uh, so anyway, I backed it down to governor. But you know, you get one of those things in your head. It's like anything and. Pretty soon it becomes true, and did, pretty soon you start taking those steps. Get it? Did anything inspire it? Well, yes. I, I have never seen a sporting event. And what I mean by that is I've never seen a, a football game or a basketball game. My Uncle Mel won an Olympic gold medal in 64 on for basketball, and then in 65 he was part of the Celtics that won the world championship. He actually won a total of, of three NBA championships. Drives him crazy that I've never seen a basketball game, and I've tried. You've never seen a basketball game? Never. <laughs> I, I know what it is, and I've seen, but I have never from – Quarter one to, to quarter four. Tried to watch the Super Bowl a few weeks ago. I, I never got through it. And I tell you that just because I could tell you every political bait that's ever happened. I'll watch, I'll watch a, a debate for Senate. I, I loved watching him. Mean, they got this knucklehead out of uh, Connecticut, and he was taking on Linda McMahon. I couldn't believe they took him. Uh, Blumenthal, is that the name that yes. I'm looking for? And he had lied about his war service. And Linda was very interesting. She, according to Boots on the Ground in Connecticut, she spent so much money she annoyed people. That is what a number of people within the WWE said that that was their mistake. That they, I only bring that up. Nobody watched that debate, but I did. Like, I find those things and I found them interesting. And I say that because the compliments that you paid me in fighting, that was the skills I was learning. I, I was learning to talk like Dude, the man on the six o'clock that's news. That's crazy. I, was I love that. To talk like but that makes Reagan. sense. Yeah. So you were, you, so. So, so is that your uncle right there, Mel Counts? Is that him? Yeah, yeah, he was him. seven feet tall? He Holy was the first. Crap. First seven-footer. First seven-footer. Yes. He was a star on the 64 Olympic team. And he's still around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's wow. 82 years old, October 16th. He got married a year ago. <laughs> this guy just got married. He just got back from his honeymoon. Oh, no, my Uncle Mel's the oh, man. My man. Oh, my yeah. So By the way, to, oh, for yeah. a tall guy to make it to 87 feet That's tall, amazing. it's not common for that to happen. That's, That's fantastic. Amazing. So, okay, so you, you're, you're going through this phase. You're going to be a governor. By the way, favorite debate you've ever watched? Like, if you were to say, you know, I thought we are going to go into fight moments, but give me your five favorite debate moments. Well, like, because you'd be in jail, like any of those moments. What are your top five? I will tell you, watching Donald Trump end Jeb Bush by simply telling him <laughs> that he didn't have energy. And I never heard that expression before, you don't have energy. I didn't really know what it meant at the time. And then, and then he told him, oh, Jeb, you brought some energy tonight. I mean, it was just such a simple line. Yeah. Told Rand Paul one time, I've never made fun of you, and there's a lot of subject matter. Like that. And these are simple things. He told another guy, you're so far down that stage, if you're any further, you'll fall off. And I mean, uh. it was these small things. And I remember Jeb Bush, and, and it was actually Jeb's mother, and when they were campaigning, they came out and said, you cannot insult your way to the White House. I remember thinking, you guys aren't paying attention. Like, mm -hmm. this guy, this is an entertainer. This is a performer, but this is good for ratings. This is how you get me to this, how you get attention. Like, this is how it's done. And uh, you know, very early on, I, I, I like to uh, mention my, my, my Trump support because I saw that one early. I saw that very when people were still teasing him. And I was always a hoper. I didn't know where he stood or anything, but I did find him presidential. I found him to be a very good leader uh, just from a presence standpoint. You know, he'd been hinting this from 2004. It was like every four years, it was almost like a, a marketing ploy where it got annoying. And it turned out he was serious. I went and did uh, The Apprentice. And when I got there, I thought it was Trump. It was Schwarzenegger instead because mm. Trump had announced uh, to the folks at NBC that he was going to run for president. And they, they have an equal time law that never gets enforced, but it is a law. So they couldn't, they couldn't put him on TV. For so, however long he was on TV, even for that, they'd have to offer to his opponent. So, Chael, you I'm convinced – oh, sorry. But how, how, I want to stay on this governor of Oregon thing. How convinced are you, Chael Sonnen, that you will be the governor of Oregon? The reason I ask you that is uh, the current governor of Oregon, I believe her name is Tina Kotek. Yep. She's the first uh, – out lesbian governor, her and I think also at the same time the governor of Massachusetts. And there, I don't think there's been a governor. In, yeah, there she is right there. There's our girl. Uh, 
I don't think there's been a governor, a Republican governor in Oregon since the early 80s. Yes. So you'd be reversing a ridiculous trend that's going on in Oregon. How, I assume if you're a Trump fan, you're a Republican, I'm assuming, how will you get elected as governor of Oregon? Well, and I, and I will tell you, I mean, I have a number of strategies, and that, and that is Tina Kotek. I'll tell you what, she's tough. Like, I don't agree mm-hmm. with her on politics, but she's tough, and she does not upset anybody. She finds that she doesn't go in the media and try to make waves. She goes in the office and works. I've got to give her credit for that. She has worked to get to that position. I will take her out in the next cycle if that's the one I run in, but I, I must give her uh, that compliment that she, she will show up and put some time in. One thing that happens in Oregon is we are known as the second bluest state in the nation, only behind Massachusetts. And I just don't find that to be true. You guys are bluer than California? Yes. Wow. I mean, we were the first. Oregon? uh, That's what he said. We legalized drugs. We're trying to switch that right now. Yeah, I I actually wanted to ask you, I remember in 2020, Oregon became the first state in the union to legalize and decriminalize all drugs. All of them. And Pat always talks about what? Anything. Pat always talks about bad policies have what? Consequences. Consequences. Yeah. Now they're going back and they're like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have done up. that. Yeah. What would you do on the drug situation in Oregon? But that was a really very bad. stunning one. And, and the theory behind it isn't the worst theory. The theory is that you reduce crime when you stop making it illegal. And drugs are about the only thing in the world that you sell and somebody has to die over it. So that wouldn't happen anymore. This was the thought. This way, You wouldn't have to have crime. You wouldn't have to do that. In fact, it was the government that was opening these things and they're going to give you clean needles. And it got weird. It got really weird and I don't quite know how you go down that path ideologically like I, I couldn't imagine coming home and telling my mom hey mom this is what I'm going to do and mm-hmm. I just couldn't imagine telling her that was my idea but at any rate it, it, it was a big problem there's all sorts of homelessness and the crime is up and the addiction is up and dropouts and single mothers and I mean everything that we would like to reduce is up and they are uh, being a completely um, a majority with Democrats they are trying to change that right now they realize they made a mistake you, you think you're electable in Oregon Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We, we, we have, to finish the thought I was, is um, why we're the second bluest state in the nation. It's just one county. It's Multnomah County and it's Portland. And the Republicans come in every single cycle and they try to appease the people in Multnomah County. They try to win them over every time. I don't know why they do that. I will annex Multnomah County. I will put it on Zillow and sell it to the state of Washington, and I will roll in and take Vancouver from them. I have no idea why they're trying to appease any of those people. I will pay. I'll buy all their property. I will pay them, and they can leave. But when I say that, I feel like that's the biggest mistake they always try to make. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cure homelessness, and then nobody even takes a step in that direction. Multnomah County has made it very clear they don't care about crime, they don't care about drugs. We burnt Portland to the ground, and the mayor joined in. They blamed Trump for an insurrection, which they couldn't even spell, in all fairness. They never heard the word, they couldn't spell it to this day. They burnt Portland to the ground on mm-hmm. video. They threw the Molotov cocktails at all the buildings. They, they raided and, and, and destroyed everything, and then those businesses didn't come back. When the, when the city didn't make any arrest, and it was on video, when the mayor came down and protested with the rioters. The business said, we're not coming back if we don't trust you. They went across the bridge into a state of Washington. It's only seven miles away. And I, I mean, I just share that with you that that's not right. And that isn't what the people want. And they do a good job of getting them to the polls. And then they end up pissing off the Republicans because they try to appease well, no one can. I'm not joking about that. And I realize I can't put it on Zillow and sell it, but I'll get a long way with that statement. And if I could put it on Zillow and sell it, I would. I think or I think <laughs> Portland was one of the cities. I know in Seattle, they think they had Chaz, these autonomous oh, zones. For goodness sake. What was going on in Portland? I, at some point, you know, the left has gone too far left. They're no longer liberals and, you know, uh, uh, democracies with a lower D. It's just it's gone full left. It's gone full woke. How would you actually change Portland and these autonomous zones and this woke lefty, uh, as Elon Musk calls it, the woke mind virus. What would you do with that? I, I have to tell you, I mean, this gets very philosophical, and I've been thinking about this since I was nine years old. So wow. I'm trying, I, as you guys are asking me, which I didn't know you were going to ask me about this, I thought we were going to be talking like O'Malley or something uh, <laughs> with the title fight. So I'm, I'm trying to find a way to compress this. But uh, first off, it's the mindset. It, it drives me crazy. Now, my, my sister is the head of school board, and my mother is a teacher. Wow. I, I disclose that because I'm going to give a hard time to educators. I, I, I'd like people to know that I... I've lived this. I live with it. My family kicks in, but I have a tremendous problem. When when teachers come out and say, you know, we don't have funding or or the classroom sizes are too big, 
that's a problem for me. I'm a wrestling coach. I have never been paid a dollar, but I have brought in millions of dollars in the form of scholarships for the athletes I've coached over the years. There are 80 boys that show up on the football field at three o'clock, tired and full of testosterone. The worst kids in the school. Their mouths are shut. They learn exactly what we want them to learn. And we're not paid a single dollar as coaches. And I have a big problem when the teachers can't keep your attention for 30 minutes. I think that's I, – I, I think that we got to be a little bit tougher. We have to expect certain things. When we keep throwing money at some of these problems – I mean, you asked me how I'm going to clean up Portland. Mm-hmm. I will deputize the Gypsy Jokers and the Mongols. I will put a Harley Davidson on every block. We will end <laughs> crime that day. And I'm not joking about that. They're talking about school shootings. Well, what are you going to do? we got to bring all this money. we got to have resources officers. I will deputize some good old boys that I know. We will make this go away real fast. Wow, white herb style back in the day. White herb style. You will pull in, and there will be a guy on a Harley that you're going to have to pass. If you think I'm joking about it, you think that they're going to walk the, the whatever past them, they're not. There, there's other ways to do this. We've tried the nice way, and it didn't work. It sounds there's like it's going to be the, the new Oregon Trail. What, yeah. what, what do you think about what is, is that kind of an idea with, with seeing what Bukele is doing in El Salvador? Are you seeing how this guy won 85 wow. percent on the second term? What he did with the Mara Sabato, the MS-13 going in jail, and they're sleeping on bets that are metal. You're so you're not sleeping on a mattress. Good, what, good. what he's doing to him? What do you think about what he's doing in El Salvador? Sheriff Joe, I just learned about this actually a few days ago. This Kelly gentleman, but uh, Sheriff Joe, or probably if I could transfer today, I knew all about him. This guy was a legend, and. You know, another thing that he did is he was deputizing people. It wasn't this whole thing where you're hiring, we're having budget cuts, and we don't know what to do. I mean, I keep hearing about that, but the people that I got the most from in my life, whether that was parents that weren't paid or that was coaches that I had uh, that were mentors, they weren't applying for jobs, and it wasn't money, and they didn't need budget cuts, and they didn't complain, and they didn't need uh, they, they, they didn't need COVID time off, and they didn't need summers off. I mean, it was, it was one of these situations where the right people are out there, and they will come forward, and they'll do a really great job, but there's, there's another way to do it. I mean, when I get asked this in Oregon, I ultimate run, and it's either going to be my success or my demise, but I'm going to tell them I'm going to bring back the lynch mob. That's what I'm going to do. What does I, that I'm mean? Going to bring, the lynch mob are the good old boys that put on masks, and they come in, and they handle the business. If you want to kill somebody or you want to rob them, you're trying is going to be right here in the street. I'm not being literal when I say okay. that, guys. <laughs> but I'm talking about from a standpoint that I'm going to let Multnomah County know. Like, the gig is up. There's a new sheriff in town. And just like you can try to pass by the guy on the Harley, you can come and try to pass by me. Nobody's throwing a Molotov cocktail. When I'm here, can I tell you something that happened at a debate? You asked me debate moment. Yeah. Chris Christie. Yeah. All due respect. Chris Christie goes to a debate, and it was the very first one, and he attempts to gain favor with his knowledge of the Ukraine situation by telling the people on the stage that he went there. I actually went to Ukraine and you don't understand what they're doing. I'm quoting Chris Christie right now. They're taking, they're taking the sons out of the home and shooting them in the head. And then they're raping the sisters and the wives. Like, Chris, you saw that? Because no one's getting raped when I'm around. No, nobody's getting kicked <laughs> in and shot in that. But this is exactly what he said. Now, all his point was is he checked into a hotel and he watched it on TV like the other candidates did with Hout flying to Ukraine. But they should have called him on it. Ramaswamy should have called him on it right then. I said, Chris, what are you talking about that you went to Ukraine and you saw these things. It was a very weird statement for him to make. I thought there was a few gotcha moments. Quite frankly, even when Haley is talking about, you know, I use my stiletto as a weapon. It's like, when? <laughs> when did you do that? And that was my big problem with Chris Christie. Like, if you're going to be the fat guy with an attitude, at some point in your life, you had to whip somebody's ass. Whether that was on the football field and you, you were the guard or, or whether you got a, a weightlifting bench press record in junior high, at some point in your life, if you're the fat guy with a big mouth, you had to kick some ass. And he didn't. He was just a fat guy with a big mouth. What do you think about Vivek, by the way, seeing some of the stuff that he was doing? By the way, you're making a very good point because from the Christie side and the Haley side, Haley's obviously suspended yesterday, and she said, I'm not going to be endorsing Trump, and she gave some kind of a Mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher. But what do you think about Vivek, the way he handled himself? Oh, he he is such a, an impressive man. He really, first off, he's handsome. He likes his wife. I like a guy that likes his wife and not everybody does. <laughs> I like a guy that is, is proud of his vows and his commitments. I just thought he did awesome. I thought he handled himself very well. I thought he was tough. I thought when he called out the RNC on stage, when she's sitting right there and said, you need to be replaced, that stuff isn't always nice, but I thought it was tough. I found him to be a good leader, and he also knows how to pick a side. You don't want a guy on a fence. I mean, I had to, I had to compliment Kina, Tina Kotek, who I might be running against 
you don't want a guy on a side. And, you know, when Vivek decided that, that he was done, he came to Trump, and he was amazing. He, he was as good as Tim Scott was as far as going out and stumping mm-hmm. for him and saying the right thing. Not Wayne, and I'm making it clear that I want something in return. He made it very clear I'm backing you because I'm back in the country like I said I was. Now, Shell, you said you'd run for governor like you're thinking about running like here soon, like in the next couple of years? Yes. Really? Yes. I, I don't know that I'm going to, uh, but yes, yes, I'm, I'm looking at that. Is that public I, info? Like head have to you... head with Tina Cote. Have no, you... right now. My friends know. I had a conversation on a plane yesterday. I was trying to gain a vote. I was sitting next to this very nice woman. Now, one of the things on my platforms, aside from having the lynch mob and the, the, the gypsy jokers getting deputized, which is figurative. I'm being a little bit serious about that, by the way. <laughs> um, I have to talk with this woman, and I feel that there's work and there's having a job. And I think that there's a difference. I think if you have a reasonable expectation to get dirty and or sweaty, that you work. And if you don't have a reasonable expectation to get dirty and or sweaty, you have a job. Both are very good. But I'm going to bring a dignity back to the labor force, not to the guy whose kids go to school. I'm going to bring it to the guys who kids that built the school. And all I'm going to do is quite simply, instead of working 30 years to retire, if you give me 20 years in a trade, I will retire you. You will have a little bit more time. Right now, they got to work four months a year for free. The government takes their money, but they're taking it from the plumber the same as they are from the guy that owns the car lot. And... There's an argument for flat tax. I don't have a problem with it, but there's also an argument to have appreciate for somebody that actually contributes and builds something that he has a little bit of time to spend with his family at some point before he's got a bad back and bad knees because he was putting in labor. Now, my father was a plumber, so this comes from a certain place, but they aren't the same. Working and having a job are not the same. And I, I get credit a lot, Patrick, for how hard I work. But I don't. I take the compliment because it's nice when people say it. But I'm not dirty and or sweaty. My father Mm. worked hard. That's who worked hard. Who didn't feel like it and put on his boots every day at 530 and walked out that door. That's a hard worker. By the way, Rob, you just pulled this up. Can you show this real quick? Look how red Oregon is outside of. I mean, that's a... Which is going to be sold on Zillow mm. as soon as I get the authority, <laughs> right. Patrick. But yeah, PBD, so. if you go to any state in the union, I mean, you can maybe probably find this, it's always blue in the major epicenter cities. Any, go to any state. Go to Alabama. You'll see the, 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 the capital of Alabama will be blue, yeah. and then everything else is a sea of red. It's actually insane. The cities, the urban centers all go blue, and the rural areas, the suburbs... All go red. Yeah, this is in Alabama, right? Here. I don't I, know if you can show the, the the entire United States. I get but that's that. But how it is. Oregon, Oregon yes. was dramatically in a you know smaller portion that was blue. So it's going to be exciting to see you running yeah. uh, here soon. To have a <laughs> to have him as in that debate, mm-hmm. all of a sudden everyone's going, oh. "What are you doing tonight?" I'm watching the Oregon governor debate. Oh, really, I oh. am. Why? Shills in it. It's going to be entertaining. Before to we see shift gears, just one last political question: uh, You potentially become one of a very few handful of former professional major athletes that have become a politician, right? I mean, Jesse Ventura became a governor of Minnesota. Yes, he did. Um, there was. Um, Bill Bradley. Tom, uh, Bill Bradley, New York. Tommy Tuberville, he was the coach of uh, Auburn, I want to say. Senator. He's now in Alabama. He's a senator in Alabama. Um, Steve Garvey, the, the, the pitcher. I think he's become a, a running for senator in California. He's in the finals. So, uh, do you just, look at some of these archetypes and be like, all right, cool. This is what these guys did to curry votes, curry favor. This is how athletes have transitioned to the political world. I, I will tell you, yeah, yes, I do. But I largely look at them if, for what not to do. I don't respect athletes, for one. I, I don't respect <laughs> an adult that plays a game. E- even if you're in a cage and fighting, I, I get crazy. You know, you were a macho. Thing. I'm still playing a game. That's not, that's what kids do. And I do think it's one of those things. We had a guy run in Oregon. He was a really great guy, but all he could ever talk about was his time in the NBA and his time in the NBA. And he had different egos in the locker room. I would go listen to him speak. And I, I stopped doing that. People don't respect, you know, we'll pay some tickets and we'll come watch. And, you know, you, you, you're out there with a jersey and a ball. Like you're, you're getting this confused. I, I feel like we see a lot of celebrities doing that. Who's this gal? She was dating 50 Cent for a minute. I can see her. Chelsea Chelsea Handler. How'd you guys know? Yes, Chelsea. She's supposed to leave. She made a deal. She said, if Trump wins, I'm leaving the country. I think Madonna said it. A few people have said this. They don't understand how helpful they are. Like, you're not winning vote. You're turning people off. Mm -hmm. You you sound like a a kook. There's a guy right now. uh, It's not Harvey Weinstein. um, Reiner? Bob Reiner? He's a very big guy. Rob Reiner. There he is. 
and he's doing the same thing. He's yeah. effectively he thinks he's he's bringing them over. And he's not. He he's sounding like mm-hmm. a kook. Like I, I will just tell you as a Republican, I'm happy to have him. I'm happy to have him on the left. I hope mm-hmm. he keeps doing that. And well, I Bill don't. Maher called all these people out in a segment a few weeks ago. He's like, all these people who said if Trump gets elected, I'm leaving the country. Uh, <laughs> the list goes on and on of the, the people that said this. He goes, you're still here. Yeah, I I you're still here, Bet Midler. Yeah, I told him make you're it make here. it make it a new law put into law. If you say those words yeah. and that thing doesn't happen, you have to leave. Yeah. Pack up your shit, leave. So, chill, what do you think about so DeSantis? But a deal's a deal, right? I, you I, gotta if, go. If it comes, that's out a of your verbal mouth, contract. It's a verbal contract. So, chill, we live George in Florida. Lopez. Uh, Patrick moved here. I moved here. Adams, you know, Miami guy. We had a you know we have a great governor, Governor DeSantis. He made that decision. He ran. What what are your thoughts on him? His public speaking. What what was his problem? Where did he fail in your in your in your, in your eyes. DeSantis is a stud. That's another tough guy, and his resume is impressive. I mean, this guy had military, and he had Harvard, and I, this guy was a really great guy, in my opinion. He, he had a lot of energy, and you could trust him. I feel like when he told you guys, Floridian, something, that he did his best to follow through on it. And there's a real honor in that, right? I mean, there's an honor in somebody that goes through the White House doors and does what they say they'll do. As simple as that sounds, we all can appreciate that. Um, he should have ran. You know, one of the, the great interviews that Trump did about him, and Trump said, my people have told me don't bring this up because nobody cares, but this is not loyal. Mm-hmm. I helped him to be governor. Yep. And as soon as he got power, he's turned the gun on me. And Trump said this in the interview. He said, my people have told me don't bring it up, that the American people don't care about that. And Trump said, but I think they do. You want to know something? Because I think Trump's telling the truth. I think that's part of his code. The smartest thing Joe Biden could have done is pardon Donald Trump. And I cannot believe he has not mm-hmm. done it. He would have created such an internal problem with Trump, who does understand wow. you do something for me. You know, it's it's a big deal. He understands it. He's, he's written about it. He's talked about it. It's why he didn't even accept money in 2016. Didn't get the credit for that. The people never give you credit when you when you don't raise money. I see so many politicians mm-hmm. do that. I'm not taking PAC money. Nobody knows what PAC stands for. Take the goddamn money. Take it every <laughs> single time. <laughs> but, but I'll just share with you. Um, yeah, but Chell, with all due respect, and I mean this with sincerely, he, the problem with Ron DeSantis is he doesn't have what you have. And what is that? The it factor. Things have astronomically changed in politics since the advent of social media, since basically 2010. Since Facebook basically showed up, Instagram showed up, YouTube became pervasive. Unless you have the it factor, unless you're a showman, that we're the intention economy, uh, eyeballs equals votes and equals money. If you can mirror that and match that with policy, you have a winner right there. So, I mean, I don't, we're, we're learning what your policies are, but you have what Vivek has. You have the, 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 the ability to garner attention. It, that, to me, is, is the biggest problem. If I can support the point you just made and, and further that, Joe Biden is saying that he's not going to show up for the debates. And before, Trump said, I'm not going to show up for the debates. That's not a political statement, but they're playing that game right now. They don't have to, and they would have had to have before social media. To your point, there was nowhere else to get camera time. There was nowhere else to get your message out. You had to walk on that set. Now, you don't have to go. You could hold your iPhone up and do it right now. You can make it like Kanye did with the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl commercial. And I, I think that that's a... I think that that's a very interesting concept. I think that it really has empowered the people. And uh, and speaking of that, this will be down the road, but people are need to be very grateful for, for Elon Musk. Very grateful for, for what he's doing. Or we would have so much control and so much what you can't say. I'm just here misinformation and you're a liar and this guy's on perjury. It's like, man, when I was in the fourth grade, it was the first time our teacher ever took us uh, to the library. And there was two kinds of stories. There was fiction and nonfiction. So I don't know what this misinformation and you're a liar and you're creating perjury and you're trying to confuse me. I don't know what that is. There's only two kinds of stories. Some are true and some aren't. What's the big deal? I don't really understand what the big deal was. You know, you've got a level of obligation to be able to. To see through it. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.